Coach, first team uh, to go back to back in the largest classification. I don't know if you know that or not. Um, yeah, the 6 has been in existence one year. <laughs> Four, well, you're eight, talking, eight, you're talking, yeah. you're talking the largest of the existing ones. Yes. Uh, just going back to back is an amazing feat because it's not like having a professional football team or baseball team where you can retain players. You, you lose via graduation. Usually that changes the dynamics of the team. And the dynamics of our team did change vastly from last year. We were a totally different team uh, style-wise. Last year we were bunners and slappers and scratching around to get a run or so and playing the exceptional defense. This year uh, we got more power in the lineup, more base hits, scoring more runs. And the defense wasn't quite as good as it was last year, but it wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the core the core group from last year are up the middle. Second, short, Belgevani was at first. She moved to short. Morgan and Maddie were back. And from there, we added kids. And uh, probably two of the biggest additions that I had no clue, they were not on the horizon, were Fox played right field and Kelsey Tobin are DP. Tobin had the highest batting average on the team coming into today. And she was a, uh, an unknown JV player last year. But at the end of the year, when we formed the tournament team, we look at our JV squad and we like to have 20 on our tournament team. We usually have about 14 kids, 15 kids running at the varsity level. So we add another three or four kids. She was an add on last year. So when we graduated them last year and over the winter, I'm thinking, oh, Mo's going to be real good pitching and catching's going to be solid. We've got two solid infielders. I've got to replace two quarter infielders and the entire outfield. But in that, in that thought process, Kelsey Tobin wasn't even on the radar. It came about basically uh, maybe by accident. Fox was a freshman. She was a shortstop, so I visioned her. And over the winter, I said, well, I'm going to try her at first base. And Walling is a catcher who's a good stick, which I said, well, we'll probably DP her. Now, I got two outfielders I know for sure, Bernard and Beasley. I need to find a right fielder, and I'm set. So after about a week, week and a half, Fox just couldn't handle first base. The, the mental mechanics of it were a little bit too much for her. So I made a decision. I said, she's a great athlete. I talked to her. I said, Foxy. I'm going to put you with the outfield group, give you a shot of winning a starting job as an outfielder, and I'm going to look for somebody else at first base. So then I looked to Walling. Walling handled the job okay. I said, well, I now have a first baseman, and I have the bat in the lineup. Fox ended up being a starting outfielder. Now I need a DP. So then I said, well, I want to give Tobin the first shot. And if it don't work out in a couple weeks, I'll give her two, three games. If it don't work out, I'll go to somebody else. She ended up batting near 500 coming into the today's game. So it was kind of by accident, but uh, once once we got it ironed out, my lineup never changed at all. Not not one iota. I used the same lineup from game two probably all the way, maybe game one, except when Bernard got hurt. Then I, I, I played Tobit in the field. So that's kind of how that, that transpired. Uh, a lot of good kids. Jesus, I, I told us, told them on the way up on the bus. One of the reasons I thought we'd beat Hazelton was we had seven seniors in the lineup, and that trumps three seniors, three juniors, three freshmen. I said that's a big plus today, but right after the game, that's a big minus because they're gone. They're gone now. <laughs> we got seven holes in the lineup to fill if we're looking to next year's team, but. We'll worry about that in a few weeks. Coach, what did you see out of Morgan Ryan today and just maybe her ability to settle down? Yeah, after she, that second she, she's a big time player. Uh, you you got to realize that every time Mo goes out on the mound, everybody thinks that she's just going to blow everybody away and nobody has any hitters. These, these kids on other teams are very good hitters. Uh, they can hit Division One pitching. So, yeah, yeah I, I, hey, there are some pressure situations there where bases are loaded and 3-2 count on a bat. That's not easy to handle. She did a great job. Did a great job all season. Did a great job her whole career. 
I think a 172 games for us in the last uh, four years. And that's, she would have won a lot more, but I didn't pitch her every game. Uh, this year we let Maddie pitch about five games because I knew Mo was going to graduate. And uh, some of our lesser opponents over the last couple of years, Mo didn't pitch. She could have easily won 80 games for us. But uh, set the career record for our high school for career wins. Bittersweet. My daughter used to hold the record for Mo now. <laughs> I mean, the thought, the thought crossed my mind in the middle of the season. Well, I'm not pitching her anymore the rest of the year. She needs one more win to set it. But nah, I couldn't think of a better person uh, than Mo to, to hold the record because she's really, really a good role model, model for all the young kids in our district. Hazelton made it a little interesting in the seventh. Uh, two outs, what did yeah, you say to the girls? Uh, well, they're not going to go away. I mean, uh, you don't get to the state final without having good players. Think, statistically, when I looked at the stats the last two nights, I said, geez, I can't believe their fielding percentage was phenomenal. Their third baseman's a freshman. Their shortstop's a freshman. Third baseman had 65 assists. Shortstop had 56 assists. Five errors and seven errors. As a team, they fielded nine 971. I'm saying, geez, I just can't believe it. The kid don't get very many strikeouts in the game, and that's why the ball is put in play. So when I, when I tried to analyze, I said, how can how can they have 200 and I think it was 225 or 235 assists on a year, and we had like 145. How can that be? Well, then when I, and, and their outfielders had 60 putouts, and our outfielders had 30 or 33. I'm saying, what's that? how can that be? Well, real simple. Mo had 190 strikeouts, and this girl had 60. 60 from 190 is what? 130. Let's give 50 of them to my outfielders. They now have 80, and that still leaves me 80 to give to my infielders. And but I'd take them via the strikeout because you don't have to catch it and throw it and catch it. Coach, one through nine mentality. Eight of the start, uh, starting nine had. A hit today. What does that say about uh, the kind of team you got? I mentioned the last time I think I talked to Bill, bottomless cup of coffee. You know, my, I, I, throughout my career, when I've had teams that have maybe two or three adequate hitters, two or three real good hitters, well, you got about three or four hitters just they're saying, eh. So I'd always be going, where are we in our lineup? Where are we in our lineup? I, I can honestly say, just 27 games, I never asked once because it really didn't matter. Every kid had something different they could add to the lineup. Top of the lineup, good hitters for percentage with outstanding speed. Middle of the lineup, great power, maybe not so much speed, but two of them are courtesy runner kids. And at the bottom of the lineup, just all power hitters. No more debating best team in program history. Uh, pretty hard to debate. The only way that would be settled if uh, you could have the four core members uh, play on two teams at the same time and have them play. Uh, no, this, this team, first undefeated season in the history of the program, uh, section title, WPI title, and uh, PIA title. Yeah, I, I, if I was forced to, I have the politically correct answer. They were without doubt the best 6A team Hempfield has ever had. <laughs> Coach, last question for you here. Um, a couple of base running issues throughout the course of the game. I just want to hear your input on what happened out there. Well. The input on what happened out there. First of all, umpires got a very difficult job to do. I think, let's go to the second situation first. We stress safety all throughout the year. We stress kids not leaving the diamond with their helmet on, not on. We really stress that. And we come to the state tournament and we don't use a double first base. Why? Why do we use one all year long? Safety, 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 safety. And then when they made the call, my concern was the umpire said she was inside the running lane. I said, Fowler, I said, okay, okay, answer me a question. He said, what was that? Where's the base? Is the base totally inside the white line or is it not? He said, I don't have to answer that. He said, I know you don't have to answer that. But my point is, how is a kid supposed to touch the base when you're saying she can't be inside that lane? If she stays totally between the two white lines, she never touches the back. It was at the tail end she moved in to touch the base. So it's a judgment call, and uh, you live with it. Second base, I, 
he made the call, he made an explanation, I, I, I beg to differ. Uh, the way I saw it, she touched second base, made the turn, and ran into the shortstop. He put his arm on. That's, that's an obstruction. And he said, that only protects her going to second base. She had already been through second base. She was going to third. Now, if I looked at it wrong, if I saw it wrong, I don't know what you guys saw. That's the way I saw it. She made the turn and ran into the shortstop on the other side of second base. But you still got a run there, which was big, right? I mean, well, yeah, but we, we, we lost a run in an out. We right. might have scored three or four that right. first inning. You right. don't know. Right. And we lost at least one on the call of first base because mm -hmm. we'd have had a run in and runners in second and third. Instead, we had an out and runners back to first and second. It was a big call. But we hung on. Okay. You're not always going to get the calls. I think overall they do a good job, and uh, you got to understand their perspective. It's not easy for them from their side of window either. How sweet is 27 and 0? Yeah. 27 and 0. Uh, can yeah, that's even, pretty good. Yeah. But don't forget, we lost one nothing to York in the middle of the year in the scrimmage. <laughs> so we really, you know, we, we, we tasted defeat in the middle of the year in the scrimmage. Good asterisk. Huh? That's good asterisk to have. Yeah, we had a little She's unbelievable. Issue. It worked it in. You did it. Huh? You did it. You worked it in. Yep. You said you would. You did. <laughs> Unbelievable. Any other questions, gentlemen? Uh,